Johnny Pink. This. <laughs> this little thing right here is the Canon M50. That's my thumbnail. This is the stock kit lens that it comes with. This is a 15 to 45 millimeter lens. And I've been shooting with this a lot. even over the R5 that I'm currently filming on right now. I am really, really impressed with it. It's only 24 megapixels. It doesn't have all the, the bells and whistles and everything. So as a photographer, you really have to think when you're using an entry level camera and you don't think about it. You're used to the pro level stuff where you have your ISO in, on one button, you have your shutter speed on another, you have your aperture on another, and you can quickly switch over between focus points, and it's all right here at, the, at your fingertips. On an entry-level camera, that's not what it's for. It's designed for the person who's gonna put it into auto, maybe into program mode, and shoot with it that way, and on occasion, the video. The more I use this entry-level camera, the more impressed I am. I'm just having so much fun because you really, really, really have to think. The other lens that I've been using it with is the Lawa 100 millimeter macro lens. Uh, this, this lens is also impressive and on, I couldn't do this with a DSLR. I like focus peaking, I really, really do. The other cool thing about this particular lens that comes with it, since this does not have in-body stabilization, IBIS, no stabilization at all, the stabilization is in this particular lens. When I'm using it with the Lawa lens for macro photography, it's awesome. I don't need anything else on there because I've got that two to one and I can really zoom in on things. Plus it's at 100 millimeter. So although the Canon lens, in my opinion, is a it's a different kind of lens. I think the Lawa in many ways is better. If it had uh, stabilization, it would just be insane. It doesn't, that's not a big deal. This little lens, even hand holding for video, I love it. When I put it into, if, I'm, if I see a subject and I just drop it into, I push the record button. Yeah, it only goes into 1080, but it's not that big a deal. It's so sharp, it's so crystal clear. It's awesome. It does shoot in 4K, so if I'm shooting something like this, I could do it in 4K. The, uh, the autofocus at that point is not as good. But let me, let me show you some of these things, man. Now that you've seen a lot of these for landscapes and comparing it to the R5, is it, this, is it a, of the same caliber? No, it's not. It's an entry-level camera. The reason I prefer this over um, carrying a point-and-shoot is this has the added advantage of being able to pop this lens off, stick on my 500 f4 if I want to, and get some amazing shots. I don't get the, the, 
the autofocus tracking for the eyes, but in the old DSLR days, we didn't have that anyway, so it's not the end of the world. I can't quickly change between all the focus points, but that's something I kind of got used to in the old days anyway, <laughs> the DSLRs. If I'm vlogging with it or trying to do something like this for filming on instead of this one, well, I have to hold it kind of way far out because I'm filming at 15 millimeters. Yes, it's an ASPC lens, but it's not the end of the world, man. This thing is so cool. The R5, of course, that I'm filming on right here, I've got this mega sensor and I'm only shooting at 4K. This one I'm shooting at 1080. You know, I really kind of have to get far away from it so that it, that I'm in focus too. Uh, James and I were out at, at Joshua Tree, so in, it was ungodly windy, so I couldn't set up any of my telescopes. Not a big deal. It was just fun to hang out all night. I did shoot a time lapse with my old Nikon D750. Great camera, and went for, for stuff like that, I prefer a DSLR because the battery lasts all night. Whereas with mirrorless, because it's constantly pushing the EVF and everything else, the batteries don't last that long. And for this, a new battery is only five bucks. Man, you can buy them on Amazon, five bucks. I lost one, not a big deal, I'm gonna order more. Anyway, is this a super underrated camera? Absolutely it is. I think that most people have forgotten and I think most of us get comments on our sites uh, or on our channel saying, hey, or, or you, one of your friends, I'm just getting into photography, what, what, what would you recommend? Well, I'd recommend that you get a camera that works for you, even your cell phone, but learn how to use your light, learn how the three work together between your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. If your shutter speed is too low, of course, your photos are blurry. If your ISO is too high, it can be noisy. If you set it in auto on some of these things, um, then most of the time it's gonna do a good job unless you're in really low light. But then this one has the added advantage of having a built-in flash too, just like the point and shoots. But again, this one has the added advantage of being able to swap out a lens, I get the adapter, or I stick on my 500 f4, a professional lens, or the, the 17 to 40 that I'm filming on right here, which, wow. Anyway, that's, that's the added, added advantage to me. Do I think this is a fantastic camera? I do. Would I recommend it to a newer shooter? Absolutely I would, because this kit lens that comes with it is a phenomenal, phenomenal lens. Is it good for astrophotography? Well, no, I'd probably go with one of my DSLRs or probably something a little bit better. I did notice some, some hot pixels and a few dead pixels, but it's not the end of the world, man. And it's all supposed to be fun, so. You guys have a fantastic day out there. Johnny Pink, thanks for watching. Is this the best camera for, for newer shooters? Well, the Mark II is out. This one is, is a discontinued Mark uh, model, so I'd get that, but I think so. We'll see you guys. Johnny Pink, you guys have a great, great day out there. I'll see you out on the road on a bicycle. New album coming out soon. We'll see you.